two cost a party, holiday party. And um, I just want to say that Jose Landoni is the sculptor of this amazing Beautiful. piece of work that Beautiful. is now oh. hanging on the wall of Chukasa. Oh. Because now Chukasa not only is music and heart and soul, but it's a gallery as well. And artists are able to show their work because Mario is an art appreciator, and so is Tukasa. And um, now we're going to speak to a really nice woman named Marlies Monder. Oui, oh, c'est bon. And um, we're going to find out about other artwork that hangs in this studio and what Tukasa means to this très jolie woman. Merci beaucoup. Uh, meanwhile, I'm not French, I'm German, um, oh. but I have been in America for almost 50 years and I was in Tukasa in 1979 and of course before that as well. Since 1975, I as a photographer have um, documented the entire time from that time period on and speak on it. Okay. And the um, most amazing thing when I walked in here, I saw the love of my life, Bimbo Rivas. And the painting is by Fernando, and it is just uh, Hernandez, and it is just, you know, those times, those years were like, um, probably not, who has been here at that time? I mean, well, was I here then? 1979. Yeah, maybe a little after. Yeah, right. But, you know, uh, this, this um, I have um, a video, a DVD here that was filmed in 1978, actually the year before. Okay, so I was here long before 79. My son was born in 1979. Um, anyway, and this film was made. At Were you like 15? No, I was I was 35 and pregnant with my son. That's why I always mix up. The Talking place. about beauty secrets, we're gonna have to get yours yeah, when you're done. Right. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not 17. I'm the other one, seven, seven zero. Um, anyway, you it is, is this uh, it's called Viva Loisaira, which, of course, Bimbo Rivas coined that phrase in, in one of his many uh, appearances um, of another recording, not in this film, but in this particular film, which is really a document. It's, it's not, a, you know, it's not like the best. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry. sorry. No. Did you make no. up Loisaira? No, of course Because not. that's been there forever, right? No, no, here you go. This is what I was coming to. I'm, right. I'm going around and around. Bimbo Rivas and, and Mario and Chino Garcia and, 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 and Louis Guzman and of course all the ladies about surrounding them and Pietro Pietri and Miguel Aguin. But Bimbo Rivas, one day we were riding out, um, I was pregnant, so it was the fall of, 70, of 78, we were riding out to the country in a, in a U-Haul van. No, no seats, right? 20 people in the U-Haul. And no seatbelts. No seatbelts, anyway. nothing, okay? So the back door was open and Bimbo said, I've got it, I got a name for Loisai, Loisai, Loisaira, wow. Loisaira, Loisaira, Loisaira. Wow, so it came from like, you. No, from Bimbo. Bimbo, yeah. you were there. Yeah, I was there. Mario, you were there? I, did you come out and you went to see um, uh, Shabazz, you know, the guy who grew earthworms, yeah. long before we had gardens? And I was, and I was up. We, we, we drove up the Hudson River, and Pete Seegers was just doing his um, pumpkin ride. Oh, up these the are pumpkin fritters. Oh my God! Let me see. Yeah, this you can have one. Thing. No, yeah, the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there was a real thing. It was Bimbo, who passed away in 1970. Bimbo. 1992. Bimbo Weavers. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, Goodman. Chino looks a little bit like him. They all look a little bit like their brothers, you know. Yeah, they are well, definitely yeah. brothers. Yeah. You know. And of course, Chino is still with us and Mario is still with us. Yeah. And, and so you know, guys yeah. made up the word lower side of the Bimbo Rivers. Yeah. Then nobody else can get it. But sometimes, if you look it up online, they say it comes from Luis Sadea, which is a township in Puerto Rico, which is one of the radical townships that I've ever been in as a photographer. And as a photographer, having photographed in the streets of New York and in many other wild places, but I couldn't lift my camera because it was not appreciated. Uh, they are keeping their roots, and not very far away, they're between the, the airport 
and someone itself. Okay, so we're in a very precarious situation because of all the tourists passing. So we do not allow any tourism there, which is really fantastic. So you have to infiltrate them by saying, you know, no hablo espanol, no hablo espanol como una vaca alemana, and yeah. then you get, uh, you know. So, but um, anyway, this video is a piece of documentation that uh, the DVD is, of course, not a DVD that is sold for 10 or 15 dollars. I'm selling it tonight for 100 dollars or any other time, and always split it with one or another agency or grassroots group on the Lower East Side. So today, 100 dollars for me, 100 dollars for Tukasa, and if they can play a little clip of it, if you, if you, oh, that would be really good. Yeah, we would have to have it before. Okay, we do that the next time. Keep it in mind. I have cards here. You can take cards. You might have heard, you could look it up online, you just Google it, there is a 10 minute um, commercial, somebody called it commercial, about it floating around on the internet, you can easily access it. You also might work, of course, by my name, Louis Sider, a lot of dirt comes up. Okay. Wow. So there we go. And uh, here is to Viva Louis Sider. Just say out your website. Uh, my website is actually my full name, and I, I'm all for name recognition here. You know. <laughs> Marlies, which is why you cannot take, also take a card, Marlies at MarliesMomberPhoto.com or I really suggest just put in Marlies in photography or Marlies in the lawyer's side and, and a lot of it, everything comes up, it's amazing. You know, I mean, so I was totally against digital, so in 2005 yeah. I finally decided I have to get a digital. This is all, yeah. my work is beautiful black and white work um, and, and color. Um, but all analog until I switched, and then you know all I have to uh, digitize everything, which is why I'm charging. You know I can't I can't produce a document or documents, and my stuff is archived in the Center for Puerto Rican Studies at Hunter College. But Hunter College is broke because it's part of the you know the New York um, educational system. So um, they had my archives for four years, and I made seven hundred and fifty dollars in four years. Sounds about right. Really right. Really right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not. Somebody said something about. We, I know you don't. You have as little money as is Daniel's turkey, and I said I couldn't understand that. I said I'm not a turkey. I'm a pauper, and I am white trash pauper. Oh, but you are so freaking gorgeous. Thank you. Oh my gosh. When's your birthday? April 19th, I'd be 70. Oh, wow. I was born in 1943 in Berlin, in the middle of the war. Oh, in the middle of Berlin. Really? And on the so right on Checkpoint Charlie? Uh, it's actually Charlie Donnie came much, much later, only when the Americans mm -hmm. liberated us. Like they're liberating everybody else right now. But uh, in, I, in 43, on the 19th, was the day before Hitler's birthday. And my family was all obviously anti-Nazi. You know, anti and, uh, and by, my mother didn't want me to be born on the 20th, on the birthday, if birthday. that would have happened. She didn't want you on 420? What was wrong with her? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, uh, in, in order to show the, your alliance to Hitler, if, if your child was born on his birthday, you were supposed to give a middle name, Adolf, and oh. mine would have been Adolfina. Oh. So my mom oh. was very young, she was 24, and I was the second child. Uh, my brother was born in 41, and that wasn't that so so critical then, but now it was really critical. So instead of giving me a middle name, she gave me no middle name. So my name is Marlies Momba. Oh. I come to school and all the teachers said, where's your middle name? Middle name? I don't have a middle name. And then finally, I um, never really knew why, and um, finally my mother said, you, are, you know, I didn't want you to be the middle name to be Adolfina. When my oh. sister was born seven years later in peace times, she also didn't give a middle name because she didn't say, you know, the one can't have the young, you know. So, so are you really born April 19th? I am. Yeah. And I grew up there. My grandparents lived in the West. We were, you know, we saw we were lucky, but I'm now meeting all the the, the Aussies com coming from East. You know, the Aussies are actually like Puerto Ricans in New York, the second class citizens. Ah. But they're not, of course. Right. You know, they grew up under communism. And they're very different, and but they had, you know, they, they had, couldn't wait to catch up with everything capitalism, which made them very strange to us because we're not, I'm not a capitalist, I'm a socialist. Okay, I was born that way, raised that way, and I came to the Lower East Side, and whereas when I came here, 
the Lord decided, the Lord decided I looked like Berlin after the war. You know, rubble filled, burned our buildings. And when I was a little girl, you were not allowed to go onto those properties that were burned out because there could have been ammunition unexploded and caving in basements and, and stuff like that. But of course he went there, right? He went, what did we look for? In a bombed out, in a bombed out uh, residential area, highly residential, you know, suburb of Berlin. We looked for human remains. You know, we were like seven, eight years old, and we scrounged around and found bones, of course, but probably dragged there by dogs and not human. But, you know, when I came here, I was 22, or almost 23, and I thought, wow, you know, here I can do something. I'm old enough now to dig in, and, and I did. I'm a homesteader, a documentarian photographer, look it up. Wow. You know, yeah. my grandfather was an electrician during World War II and used to go to the boats in New York yeah. and go in and look for bombs and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, to, to, to make them... He grew up on the Lower East Side. All my grandparents did. Wow. Where were they born? Um, one set were born here, mm -hmm. and the others were from Eastern Europe and came through Ellis Island. Wow. Yeah. 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 But your story is incredible. Yeah, my story is incredible. incredible. And how many kids do you have? One. One son. And he grew up? He grew up, he was born, he was created here, born here, raised here. Uh, and then he had to kind of, um, but he, he is still, I mean, he's still, he's coming in as much as he can, but he has to live someplace, he has, um, he has epilepsy, so it's okay. a little bit difficult for him right. to live here. But um, he loves the Lower East Side, and you know, when we, when we first settled in where we are now, where he is now, I said, Mom, why don't we have any more meetings, any rallies? I said, well, you have to find a reason to meet and a reason to rally against the poor. And he found one. They wanted to put a Walmart right into New Paltz mm -hmm. like 20 years ago. You know? Oh, and, yeah. In yeah. Woodstock, they were yeah, fighting the over the CVS pharmacy that yeah. repla was replaced by it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was an A&P grocery store. Yeah. And it was the only place where really the local so people could shop. And they turned it into a CVS. Yeah, yes, yeah. But they didn't do it in no pass. Um, then what they're trying to do now is to put a quadruplex cinema into a space that is so historical no pause. It's too long story, but in other words, you know, it goes on and on and on. You but you did turn digital, right? Remember that? I did turn digital. Yeah, I remember. Do you have an iPod? No. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a cell phone? I have a cell phone. I have an iMac. Okay, okay, all right. So, you know, you got to move the times, you know. But the thing is that uh, I'm going to go back to school. Probably the Gallatin school, they asked me to, to maybe go there. Uh, I get a special deal. You know, I'm 70, you don't have to pay tradition. Good for you. you know, so, so then I can use all the NYU facilities to edit, to, edit, to, to digitize. Right. And right. thousands and thousands of negatives. We need inside. it. You have but, to. But if they, you know, the first thing they're going to find out is that they rode against us with horses, you know, when they destroyed Third Avenue and created all this housing there. They, how, this, they rode against us, and I have all of that on film. It's the first wow. thing they're going to do. Wow. You know, wow. so, and other things. My work is truly amazing because I lived here. I wasn't on assignment for a day or three or weeks. I was here for 37 years now. Wow. So and I'm still on Fourth Street. I'm a homesteader. And to Casa. To Casa is to be congratulated because they are the first building that was bought by a grassroots community. It was on the market for thirty-three thousand dollars, and it's in this film, yeah, the the, the, the a segment of it, where we call up the landlord, Fred Wood called up the landlord and said, um, um, "I'm not from this neighborhood, you know. How is this neighborhood? Is it safe?" The landlord said, "Was this any neighborhood safe?" And then, like, and then he said, he said. Um, well, it doesn't have any violations, no violations, 119 violations in the end. So Tukasa was actually bought for much less money. And it's here. It's one of the only ones that's here. We have so many grassroots. And then, you know, we, when we see this film, you all cry because it was really good old days. It was full of drugs, full of crime. Uh, the cops were in, in with the drug dealers. And, you know, it was really uh, like open hunting here. And but it was the good it was the good old time because we were close, you know. We had a telephone tree and somebody got evicted. I called five people, five people called five people, blah blah blah. We showed up at three o'clock in the morning to prevent evictions and other stuff. That was the original and Facebook. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was absolutely there was no, you know, then right, finally right. we had beepers. 
Yeah. Oh, pay phones, that was a great thing. Yeah. Pay phones, I still think pay phones were pretty yeah. cool, you know. When they worked here, they were always swept out. And, yeah. You know, they were no fire hydrants. Fire hydrants were all open. There was no street lights. There was no street lightning, lighting, you know. Mm -hmm. It was really unbelievable. And um, my father came here to visit and said, why don't you at least all paint it, you know, like whitewash it and stuff like that. And we did. We put murals on every brick wall and on every cinder block wall. And it was the most exciting time for me. And I used to be, I was a fashion photographer wow. with a studio on Fifth Avenue on 25th Street. And my lens dragged me in here. You know, I right. saw this yeah. murals, these wall high murals. I said, well, who's doing that? And what are they saying? And then I was sucked in. Mm. And I've been a pauper ever since. Good for you. So, yay. Wow. Anyway, it's, such a, it's such an yeah. honor to, to even sit on the same seat as you. You're a true living legend in this neighborhood. But you need my work no longer belongs to me. My work belongs to the community. And I can't do it by myself. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's got to be preserved not just like in the 70s, but exactly sometimes days mostly years that I have, you know, and not those Puerto Ricans, those Puerto Ricans with names and, and, and birthdays and, and, and when they passed away, if they did, and what they did, and not this anonymous, you know, thing, and my stuff is, people often accuse me, oh, you just were in love with the Lower East Side, I said, of course I was in love, and I, it's not that I didn't show the drugs and the devastation, especially, but First of all, I'm an excellent photographer and, um, and a really good black and white printer. And, um, were you ever in a building at the wrong time? Did you ever get good. swept away? Were you ever arrested? No, but I got, I got you know, I was putting my, the father of my son got involved in drugs, okay? And if, uh, I left, I lived in, lived in Puerto Rico long enough for him to get out. And when I came back, I was so... Uh, devastated by the loss of this man that I and I couldn't understand why people would stick needles and all. I was really naive, I have to say that. And so I photographed everything drug related. And so I was in Bimbo Rivers' kitchen on the second floor on Fitz on Fourth Street between C and D, where the biggest drug dealings were, were yeah. going on. And there's all these drug uh, dens Neighborhood. with names like, you know, suicide and and there was one that there was an eagle that had a had a syringe, a dripping with blood syringe that um, fly come fly with me, brother, and stuff like that, you know. And you could photograph it. I mean, I was hidden behind a curtain, but still. So then one day there was a police raid on the drug thing that I was photographing, and my Nikon, you know, the, the, the shutter was kaboom, like a gun, basically, you know. And you know, as long as they were busy shooting up, they, they didn't hear nothing, you know. But then when they started to like hide from the police and try to get rid of their stuff. Right. And but what I photographed in that in, in, in those in out of Bimbo's kitchen was unbelievable. And wow. the negatives are in a safe place. Wow. And they're only gonna be published after I pass away. Wow. Because which is I'm not wow. planning to do it so. Like, no, you're gonna be around, I can tell. So, so do you exercise? Of course I ride my bike. Daily, I go swimming, I go, I go skiing. I'm from wow. Germany after all. I used to be a Do you eat candy? Never. I don't have bought a single soda in my life. I would never drink this stuff. Do you drink coffee? Not, not anymore. Not anymore. Why? What do you do? Guinness. Yeah! Yay! I love the drink. I want to be you when I grow up. Guinness is uh, called in Germany. Uh, called. Uh, liquid bread, and my mom, who had two pregnancies during the war, became a nursemaid because she had plenty of milk. Um, there were many babies whose mothers had been killed, or you know whatever. So she became a nursemaid, and that became kind of a business or a livelihood because the the um, the government would bring cases of of Guinness to your household as long as there was a nursemaid in the house. Really? Okay? Yeah. Okay. Very, very, very oxidizing, very nourishing. So it makes and good milk. And it, you know, and it makes good milk. Really, you know, of course, the thing that you were nursed by that lady, then I'm sure it makes good milk. Oh, yeah. Okay, the alcohol. But I, the, the, that is the part we always ask about. Oh, it's not that much. But it kept. The, don't forget, there was no nutrition during the right. war, especially right, not, right. no longer in, in '43. There was no nutrition, so the milk was nutritious. There was alcohol in it. It kept the nursemaids happy and being able to cope with it. Right. You know, to have. Um, babies that are not yeah. of yours so, suffering yeah. on so the So Guinness is like the original mother's little helper. Yes. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Nurse your baby with some of this. Exactly. 
And, and one more thing that I want yeah. to say is that um, I had to do with the cough, and now I got away. Oh, you'll remember. You'll remember. Yeah. What? But um, uh, that you, are, you know, of course, then everybody who came in who was brand new and had no idea, and or some people who come in now and think it always was like this, you know. Especially store owners, they're the fifth and sixth store owners of the galleries and whatever they gone through. Not shooting galleries. And not shooting galleries. Yeah. You know what? I they all need to be educated. They need to appreciate. It's like I hate I, now they give syringes away. Like you can buy. Uh, it, no, but that's a good thing. It is exactly. It used to be so different in so many ways. Yeah. Um, so the good old days were good because we were closer. We owned La Plaza Cultural. Okay, and it was open, and and we could avail with, with, to, uh, with together with El Bohio and Charles, and oh, you know, I mean, the history is so 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 rich, right? Um, and um, well, how many languages do you speak? I, I speak German, and English, and French, and a little bit Italian and Swedish. And Spanish. Spanish. Spanish so you have a ah, it's only pero pero pero, pero um, uh, I learned it in the bodegas. And on the street here. And then Lucy? 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 No, I was you know, on Foster. I'm kidding. Do you know what Lucy is? Yes, of course. And this, it's only in bodegas, right? It's, an, it's a, like you can't find them anymore. But, yeah. And now, guess what language I'm learning now? Hebrew. Arabic. Uh, Arabic. It's close. It's very, it's the very same thing. thing. So it's very hard. And But I found a, an incredible lady who, who I found a photograph that helped her save the building on. Avenue B, where the landlord wanted to take it over because he said it was a certain class of a building, and I had in my photographs that it wasn't. Okay, so they, they, they can keep the building as, as moderate to low income. And so she promised, in exchange for my research, finding those negatives and printing those ones, to teach me Hebrew. I mean, Arabic. It's the same thing. Yeah. Salam, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's not. It's, it's really. But they're brothers, and I think they have a more in common than but not. Even their languages are not really connected to each other. Really? No, it's really different. They're very different. And of course, we have. It's really easy. Once you learn, I learn Latin. Once you learn Latin, you learn, you know, Roman. French, learn French, French, and and, and, yeah. and Spanish was is not that difficult. You know? so. Wow. Okay, well, you have no. Well, not really. We can take more so of you in another time. Then yeah. Want to, oh, this is what I wanted to say. I'm going to make a special. Mario and I have discussed it. Um, an evening showing this film here. Okay. Right, Mario? We can still do that. It would be in this room? Yes. Good. So then you show this film and you all find out about it and come and see it. Yay. And, and look for that date on the Two Causes site on Facebook, right? Yeah, we're going to have that happen. Thank you so much. Um, danke schön. Bitte schön. Oh, wie geht's? Gut, danke. Yeah, we need to do that. Oh, give it up for, um, for Marlies. You are just an elegant lady and, and a very important person to have been on the Lower East Side because a lot of this would not be documented if it wasn't it for you. I swear it wouldn't. It wouldn't. You know, no, no, I mean, I'm, you know, there's, there's still venues that, that said, oh, well, you know, the Puerto Rican element, uh, you know, what else do you do? Yeah. I said, well, of course, I do Puerto Rican elements, you know, and, and, and they're here. And uh, they were part of the neighborhood. And some certain institutions who have also been here won't include us, Puerto Ricans. But you, you painted the picture of, of the romantic Lower East Side that everybody well, fantasizes about. You have the reality of it. Lots of our good friends passed away. Yeah, I know. You know My, that's what's yeah, that. exactly. You know, by the things. And by the romantic Lower East Side that people fantasize about, exactly. But it's all here. Yeah. It's, it's all, all here. here. It's all here. I'm going to go watch it very soon. And we will be back with more to cut back.